I think that's something that really helped me is that I didn't kind of like dip a toe in or just go into my waist and then say th there was something I saw today where a guy's like, well, the whole purpose of the red pill is to get the information and leave. And I, I couldn't disagree more with that because it's not what it is. It's, it is, it's a never ending. I'm just going to stop you for a sec. It, it's, it's not to get the information and then leave. It's, it's to get the information, update your beliefs, then apply it. Right. Right. Cause I have seen people like, even in my community, like I've seen guys come in and they kind of get red pilled. They go through the material. We do a ton of Q and a, you know, zoom sessions, some coaching and stuff. And then they start to, I don't know, like they want to get right with God or something, or there's something else that, uh, distracts them from it. And they just, just kind of go back to their old ways. So you don't want to get the information and leave. You want to get the information, update your beliefs from the uh, comforting lies to the uncomfortable truth, start using it, getting the results. I mean, if you want to leave, leave, right. But you know, start using it and getting the results, but yeah, to those points. I equate it to, and when I have conversations, it's like, look, what the red pill basically is doing is it's, you're a football coach for, for my American guys out there. And it's the opposite team is handing you their playbook and is saying, these are the plays we're going to run in this order at this time. Here's who's getting the ball. Here you go on a silver platter. And the guys that take the red pill, okay, we've got the strategy. Now we're going to adjust. We may have to make some changes. We may have to tweak what we were planning on doing. And, but we have the blueprint. We know how to get there. We know how to have success. And the blue pill guys and the angry guys are saying, well, that's not how it's supposed to be. And they light the playbook on fire. Mm. So, you know, there's a the problem is, is that the playbook actually requires work. There's training, right. there's diet, there's nutrition, there's, you know, chiropractors, there's doctors, there's physiotherapy, there's all these people you have to deal with. And then they're like, well, that's covered, that's covered in work. Like that's dressed in overalls and it looks like work. Why would I want to do that when it's easy to just sit over here with the other guys and sulk? I think the biggest thing I run into is how little guys value their time. And, you know, this came up in a conversation today that we had where, you know, everyone's looking for strategy or, you know, quick tips or this and that, or how do you do this? Or how do you strategize? It's like, if you're busy, man, if you're out there chasing excellence and you're on your purpose and you're out there making bank and you're out there in the gym trying to sculpt your body and get that swimmer's body and get those broad shoulders and some waist, you don't have time to sit there and watch a bunch of red meat and watch takedowns on YouTube, right? You just don't. Like, if you do, you've got a problem and you've got way too much time on your Yeah, hands. so ask yourself that question. Like, do you think Jeff Bezos, do you think Elon Musk, do you think, like, any of these millionaire billionaires out there that we all sit around and watch on, like, Shark Tank and Dragon's Den, you know, like, whatever shows, like, oh, look at these guys, they're so interesting. And it's like you, like, literally, Elon Musk broke Bitcoin for, like, a fucking month because of a tweet. Like that's how much people simp for Elon Musk and what he says, right? But do you think that he's sitting around watching fucking takedown videos? Do you think he's watching like, you know, don't bother. It's not worth it. Like forget about trying to send rockets to the moon, Elon. Just sit back and, you know, just sit on your cash and buy an island or whatever, right? It doesn't go that way. And the worst part of it all is that what that stuff does, and, and well, I guess the lack of, one of the bad parts about this red meat is the lack of like actionable advice. It's the lack of, okay, how do we take this and apply this? This is what I think, obviously, really liked about your stuff. This is what I really like about Paul's stuff. This is even what I kind of love about Rolo's stuff is he's like, hey, I'm just giving you – I just work here, man. Right? I'm mm -hmm. giving you information. Yeah. You're the one that's got to get in the game and get in the arena. Yeah. But then you've got these guys that say, okay, well, I want a woman that is submissive and she's agreeable and she needs to cook and she needs to clean. Yeah, but are you a guy worthy of that? And that's the kicker. It's – well, you know, I don't know what happened, man. I, I stood up for myself and she gave me, you know, this and that. And I drew a boundary and then she told me to go F myself and left for another guy. It's like, all right, well, look in the mirror, man. Like, do you have many chins? Do you have two, three, mm -hmm. too many, right? Are you, what are your hobbies? Are you a high value guy, right? Do you have options? All of these things where if you're going to try to flex your muscles and you don't have any, then no one's going to take you seriously. And that's where the black pill stuff comes in. I, I think I said this early in the chat. I'm like the black pill is a result of guys that are not, they don't have a chance because they're not willing to do the work. And they look at that and they say, you know, she should just like me for me, man. She should just love me for the way I am. And if she doesn't, then, you know, 
that's her problem or that's her fault or then screw her because all women are, you know, this and that and all women are that. And it's like, look, you've got the game, right? You can either play or not play, but you can't change it. It's the only game in town. So it's up to you, man. And you know what? Like if you want to be black pilled and you want to go your own way and you want to say, forget all that, that's fine. More for me and you. Um, but don't go poisoning the well with your nonsense because you're afraid to do the work. Don't make well, it harder for us guys out there that are willing yeah. to put time into the gym, make the money, make our career. And again, I'll tell you this though, there like like there's an upshot to that too, though. So, you know, to give those guys some credit, they end up outing themselves because at some point somebody trips across their material before they might come to like me or Rolo or listen to your stereo show, you know, for example. And they're like, okay, let me check this out. This is interesting. And they start to watch it. And then they come across something like, oh, you know, like Rich Rolo and Ryan are all shit or something like that. And here's why. It's like, and then they go to themselves, well, this guy sounds like a bit of an idiot. So let me go see who these other guys are. And then they kind of like, like they're free advertisers for us almost. And they don't even realize it. So there's an upside to it. You know, you got to look for the silver lining and stuff. And, and that's something that I've been preaching to men for a long, long time is you don't lose in life. You need to learn. In every scenario, in every event, in, in every doesn't matter if it's a divorce, she broke your heart, you got fired for whatever reason, um, you know, you go right down the list. Don't lose, learn. There's a lesson somewhere in that that you can apply to your fucking life and level up so that you don't make that same mistake again. And share those experiences with other guys so they can, you know, get some use out of it. But, you know, well, this guy's a nerd, so you should all say he's a nerd too. And yeah, and. Well, I think that's a really great point. Like that's hard to do, right? As some guy, like, for example, right? Going back and having to relive your failures and relive stuff that you did wrong, like that's painful, right? For myself and my relationship. it means taking ownership, right? hundred percent, right? And it's, I equate it, you know, this past relationship and this breakup, I talk about it like, hey man, it's a house that burned down, okay? The house is now burned down. There's, now you have two options. You can just say, house is burned down. It's not salvageable. There's no point. I'm just going to go find another house. Or you go sift through the ash pile and say, how did this happen? Was this too close to that? How could this? You go through the rubble, man, and you figure out what could have been different and what could you change? Because if you don't, you're just going to burn down the next one and burn down the next one and the next one and so on and so forth. So it's mm -hmm. much easier just to throw your hands up and say, screw it, like on to the next one, this, that, and the other. Um, and that's what a lot of these guys get wrong. It's like, oh, like next or like, or whatever it is, or you messed up, just forget about it and move on. And yeah. it's like, no, like take the time and go through it and really do the work. And I think that's, you know, not to toot any my own horn here or anything like that, but I think that's a difference that I've found between me and a lot of other guys is that I did not, you know, like, like I said earlier, I did, I jumped in this thing head first. I was like, all right, I'm going to, oh, Jerry in the house. Wow. Look oh, at that. We got the crew, man. Look at this crew. Wow. Look at this I figured crew. I'd just add them all in and just make them part of the party while you're on your yeah, rank. Yeah, yeah. I know they might want to chime in while we're doing this because we were talking earlier this afternoon. So guys, right. you know, welcome. Say hi to Jerry and Charles as well. Also brothers from the tribe. But anyway, go ahead, Moff. Carry on. The only thing I was going to finish with is that, um, is that uh, really learning the stuff and it was drinking out of a fire hose for a while, but uh, I didn't learn this stuff from watching red meat, right? It was mm -hmm. getting out in the field. It was applying it. It was getting, getting better room. with women. It was learning social skills. It's just like practice, man. I mean, when I first got back out into the game six, seven months ago, I was going out on dates and I didn't know what the hell I was doing, right? Yeah. I, it's been so long since I tried to court a woman and be romantic and be seductive. And I had to relearn all of that stuff. And it was the material plus the work and the effort equals results so you can't just you can't do half of either you got to do both you can go out there and you can start, gotta, you can meet women but if you don't know what you're doing you're not going to have success you can read the material until your eyes bleed but if you're not out in the game you're not going to have success you got to do both i gotta i gotta sit back and just like say this because it makes me very proud to see you three men on this show with me tonight because i know where all three of you have come from <laughs> and all of the obstacles that you know, like, like, like fell in your path that you actually made the way. Uh, I've quoted Ryan Holiday's book, The Obstacles Away Before. I'm mentioning it again. You should read it. But obstacles will fall in your light, in your way as a man. And quite often you can make the obstacle the way. Um, don't always have to. You can go around it, over it, dig under it, whatever. But that's part and parcel. And it. it makes me proud to see that at least 
all of the shit that I've done and with all the nonsense that goes out there, at least you three men have done something with your life and you've leveled up in a way that um, I can say that at least that I feel proud in being able to contribute to part of that. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, floor is yours, Jerry and Charles. You guys want to chime in too? Yeah. Hey, actually, I'll go, ahead and, go ahead, Charles. Thank you. Um, actually, I did not expect to be on the show at all. I was just coming up to quickly leave a note in the comments and I was going to go to the gym and then I am, I am here. So I'll just make my point. Thank you. Uh, I've started to notice that the mental swamp um, has taken on certain traits of a cult. Um, it's almost yeah. going the way of a lot of the leftist organizations. Uh, I don't want to refer to anything right now uh, that's happening right now. Uh, but if you look back into the 60s, like the Weatherman Underground, um, you know, they have these uh, slogans like don't trust anyone over 30 or don't trust anyone over 40. And, you know, all these slogans that you hear about um, in these socialist organizations. And, you know, there are these priests that are preaching these values while repeating these lingos. And then the cultists you know, the acolytes, the followers are just constantly repeating these things. And I, I, I think one thing I found about Rich's work is that if you actually make a commitment to yourself um, and to do these things, you don't need those lingos. And there are no high priests. Uh, there is no ideology. In fact, when you bump into a wall, let's say you go out and you do uh, you know, five, 10 day game open approaches and you get rejected out of all of them. It's actually pretty painful. And you're the only person who feels that pain. Uh, there's no amount of labels or slogans uh, that can substitute that experience. And it's only from those very solitary experience that you go through as you put in the work independent of what you read or what other people have been repeating next to your year. It's only through that you grow. And, you know, I, I don't, I, when I go out on a workout session and I do these compound exercises, I don't stop until I feel, I feel, I feel the pain. I mean, I, mm. I have tendonitis right now, uh, but I'm still going to go and do it. So that, that's all from me. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to chime in. Um, you know, we show up, guys show up to this community and um, we're looking for answers. We're desperate. Uh, we don't know what to do next. And um, I stumbled across Rich's channel and, you know, there was a lot of other stuff that was intriguing to me. And, you know, we like to, we navigate towards the um, guys that tell us how to get the girls. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know, if you want more subscribers, let's talk about how to get the girls. That's, that's really easy. But, um, Rich was talking about doing the work and it was like, well, what does that mean? Well, it started out with like, you know, Hey, lose some weight. Okay. I've lost some weight. I've got some more to lose. I've gone out of pant size, which is, uh, I've been the same pant size for 10 years. That's exciting. Um, you know, and these other guys out there just peddling indignation, Oprah made a billion dollars, you know, peddling indignation, indignation, excuse me. And um, I don't know, your self-worth is not tied to your notch count. That's something that I kind of fell for that trap when I first showed up. And, um, you know, these other guys out there, Rich, they're, they're not helping men. They're, they're, they're actually hurting them. I believe that. You know, being part of your community and, um, you know, seeing how much love there is between us, you know, and um, new guys showing up and, you know, their life's a mess and things start to get better. They lose weight. They make more money. I mean it's fantastic. I'm just, I feel so happy to be part of this group, you know, and Moff, I mean, I saw you show up and man, it's exciting. Now you're on stereo. You're the most, what is it? The most hated man on stereo. The most hated Something man like in the stereo yeah. app. Yeah. So if you want to talk to Moff, hop on stereo, that new app, it's a lot of fun. And Moff's see, there. Um, yeah. See like right here, like this is the typical example <laughs> of like, you know, you're like clown out there, right? Moff's a virgin, right? Dude, are you getting any? Because all I see is an avatar picture of somebody that's obviously not you, right? It is what it is. Yeah, and I just, you know, 
you talked about updating your belief system. You know, I went through a um, pretty awful divorce, pretty hard on me, a couple kids involved, a lot mm -hmm. of, a uh, lot of lawyers. And um, if I wouldn't have found your channel, I probably would have ended up in another marriage quickly and unhappy and working my ass off and being treated like a doormat. And, mm -hmm. and I don't want that. So, you know, now I'm able to uh, make choices and, you know, the women in my life, you know, if, if, if they don't, I'm going to use the word behave, which probably will turn a few people off, but if they don't behave in a way that is acceptable to me, I, I'm done with them. It's quick. It's easy. And um, what do you say? Hire slow, fire fast. Right. Same thing. So, um, Same thing with women. Yeah. Yeah. And um, another thing that we want to share with the guys, you know, that are new here looking for some answers, um, you're not going to be able to make a dent in the universe if you're busy chasing women and watching all these videos over and over and subscribing to this and that. It's a big waste of time. Mm -hmm. Pick somebody you like. I suggest Rich. You can follow Paul uh, with Apex Mindset. Fantastic guy. Moth, he's an up and comer. Um, and we'll, we'll set you straight. These guys are good. So, yeah, that's yeah. great, Rich. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Appreciate that, man. All right. Hey, I'll one more thing. One oh, more yeah. thing before I one more thing before I get off. Hey, I saw something. It was pretty cool. That I don't know how to say his name. Robert Kawasaki yeah, with the uh, Rich Dad channel. Yeah, yeah he I'm... mentioned your he mentioned your name today. Yeah, on, yeah. Uh, Roller's channel. So yeah, I saw if that. you're listening, if you're listening, Robert, come on Rich's show. There's a lot of men that would love to hear your story. Yeah. Well, like the interesting thing about what he's been doing because I read Rich Dad Poor Dad about. 15 years ago, I actually met Robert about 10 years ago at a conference. He probably would not remember me, but um, it's kind of funny that I came across his stuff because I wanted to get red pilled on money. And now he's kind of like leaning into Rolo's work. And, you know, as an extension of that, it sounds like he's also watched some before the train wreck too. So it's cool, man. You, you know, like I'm glad that we're able to get there. And and like the whole point of why I wanted to, to do this and why I keep wanting to do this is because I want to move the bar in guys' lives, right? Like I, I want to red pill a guy like Elon Musk so he's not doing stupid shit in his personal life with <laughs> women and putting out dumb tweets like he does sometimes. But you get the point, right? Like I want to get guys' heads screwed on so right that they can be a weapon in their real life. And I, I've seen Moff doing that. I've seen you doing that, Jerry. And well over 500 other guys, you know, in the community that have that have been doing the work in that area. And it feels good that by extension, that's what I'm doing because I haven't really talked about this before, but it, it was, um, what the hell is his name is he's, he, you know, he's an Irish guy that I met at a conference and, um, dude actually made me fucking like bust up when he was talking to me specifically, um, about finding your purpose. You know, essentially you've got a, you've got a talent, you know, in life but you've also got a purpose, right? Like you have a gift, right? And when you find that gift, like you got to double down on it. And a lot of guys, you know, will confuse talents, you know, with gifts. Like I'm sure we're all talented at different things, but there's something out there that when you're doing it, you know that this is your gift, right? And this is basically what I feel like I'm doing. So I'm very happy with that. I'm going to continue to do it. Haters can hate. All you're doing is you're just, providing free marketing and sending smart guys that watch me or sorry, watch you my way. So keep doing that. That's fine. And guys, if you want to sit in the stadium watching the entertainment and the drama and the red meat, look for the lesson. If one exists for crying out loud, if it doesn't exist, then stop watching the crap. And the other thing following that up is get in the arena and play the game. And I'm not just talking about the game of chasing the girls. I'm talking about make your like, be purposeful in your life. Be a weapon. Are you effective? Like if 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 it was called upon you to fight somebody in hand to hand combat, could you do it? Could you at least try to defend yourself, or do you fold? Right? Can you make bank? Like, can you take care of your kids? Can you take care of your household? You know, if you got a woman or women in your life, are you effective in all areas? It's not just oh, let me just get my notch count up. That's like counting how many times you exhale. Well, I inhale 10,000 times today and 10,001 times I exit. Who cares? How many times you take a dump in your life? Who cares? You lose track after a while, whatever. That's not purpose. 
there's a lot more to it than that. There's a grander scope to things than just sitting around and watch other people chase excellence. Do it yourself. Anyway, um, got a bunch of other guys here that want to hop in. I got like 13 messages in the private chat. So you good, Jerry? Yeah, good. All right, brother. I'll Bitcoin. see you later. Right, we'll see you soon. Bitcoin closed above 40. Have a good night, guys. <laughs> All right, man. See you. Peace. Later, Jerry. All right. See you, Moff. All right. I'll pull you out too and start grabbing some of these other guys yeah. and give them a chance.